Hello friends, my name is Kishan and I welcome you in this video tutorial. This video tutorial is the continuation of my previous video. There we had learned how to manage transaction programmatically in Spring with JDBC module. So here in previous tutorial I had explained you about the how to manage transaction uh, with some demo project. Here I'll dig some API which are related to the uh, transaction management. So you can see in service layer I have declared transaction template and this transaction template I am making use in my transfer fund API to manage the transaction right. So transaction template is a method has a method is called execute and this execute method takes a transaction transaction callback as a, an argument and here within the transaction callback if you look into the transaction callback interface then this interface has a method is called do in transaction so using uh, anonymous class i have overridden this do in transaction method within the uh, transaction callback right so here whatever api we want to make as a single unit of work right and that is the definition of your transactions so all api you can may uh, you can put it here so that uh, in that way you are just telling the spring framework i want to uh, execute this api as a single unit of work if any of the unit is getting failed then entire action should be rolled back so this way you will have to write some boilerplate code inside your uh, your service class when you manage transaction programmatically now now if you use transaction template to manage transaction then some of the things like uh, spring uh, spring provides transaction template it uses a transaction template it uses default transaction attributes like uh, propagation required isolation default timeout default and read only false right so if you want to set this transaction attribute in your this source code then how you can do this so that's the main thing i wanted to discuss here so uh, i have declared transaction template over here and this transaction template i have declared uh, in my configuration file right and this transaction template is uh, going to use by my service layer right and service layer i have defined getter method of transaction template so you need to inject this transaction template in your service layer by using setter based dependency injection right now here again transaction templates demand you to supply the reference of transaction manager so i have uh, declare transaction manager so when you discuss about the spring with jdbc module then we have a, a concrete implementation of platform transaction manager and that is nothing but the data source transaction manager if we look into the data source transaction manager then data source transaction manager extends abstract platform transaction manager this is an abstract class which again implements platform transaction management so you can say your data source transaction manage, manager implements platform transaction manager right not directly but indirectly and the platform transaction manager has few api which are very important to know that is first api is get i transaction which returns you the transaction status and second commit and rollback these are the two api but uh, thing is that i want to set some transaction attribute while managing the, managing the transaction programmatically then the way we used to create the transaction template in our configuration file if you look into the configuration file then uh, basically we are calling creating a uh, instance of transaction template by configuring this bin right and if you go to the transaction template then transaction template has a overloaded constructor right so one of the constructor which demands you to supply the transaction manager so here basically we have used this constructor to instantiate 
uh, our transaction template. If you want to set the transaction attributes like isolation, propagation level, uh, read only attributes, timeout and all, then you need to go for this constructor, right? This constructor demand you to supply the value for transaction manager as well as transaction definition. So you need to configure this constructor in your configuration file, right? Then you will have to pass two attributes. First is argument constructor arc name equal to transaction manager and ref equal to transaction that, that is already there. Now second you will have to specify what attribute transaction definition this attribute. So again you need to define another bin right. So if you look into the transaction definition is a, in, a interface right. So you cannot instantiate. So you need to search for the implementer of this guy. So press control shift T to search a uh, uh, to search a class from a jar file. So you can see default transaction definition. This is the concrete implementation of uh, this interface. So you can again you need to configure this bin and here once you configure this bin then you can see constructor of this bin uh, gives you privilege to define the propagation behavior, isolation level, timeout, read, read only and all. So this way you can uh, define I mean transaction attribute using uh, programmatic transaction management. But these are the things I'm not going to cover programmatically because this is I, what I feel this is less important because in real world people rarely use programmatic transaction management. Most of the people use uh, uh, declarative transaction management using annotations or XML which I'm going to cover in the next series of video tutorial. So that's all I wanted to cover in this but uh, some of the more things also I want to say you. So here we have covered uh, transaction management Spring with JDBC but there are some several models in the Spring the data integration layer. If you search for the I mean star transaction manager then you can see a lot of transaction manager right like uh, data source transaction manager which is the concrete implementation in spring with jdbc api to manage transactions that already we have covered uh, if you check the earlier version of the spring then you might get the uh, hibernate transaction manager which is deprecated from the this hibernate 4.3 version but uh, if you check the earlier version of spring jars then you might get the uh, hibernate transaction manager as well which is the concrete implementation of organ platform transaction manager when you integrate a spring with hibernate and if you want to manage the transaction then you you can make use of that class but this version that is completely deprecated now if you want to manage jta transaction management then this jta transaction manager is also a concrete implementation of your platform transaction manager so if you want to manage distributed transaction in your application then you might use uh, jta transaction manager so these are the things I wanted to cover in this video tutorial. So in this video tutorial, I have explained to you about the basically transaction API and I have shown you, I have explained to you how we are managing transaction in our uh, uh, service layer, right? So here when we talk about the uh, transaction, then transaction is an activity or group of activity that are performed as a single unit of work that we are doing over here. The characteristics of transaction is that either all the activities that are part of the transactions are performed or none are performed. In other words, even if one of the activity fails, then all other activities are cancelled and system comes uh, back to the state it was in when the transaction was started. Right. So earlier I have shown you uh, I have shown you uh, through some earlier demo. So here uh, I had demonstrated when some exception arises while depositing the money, then uh, transaction was rolled back, right? Uh, and why this is happening? Because we are managing transaction programmatically. 
so when you talk about the transaction then transaction is uh, has a something is called a seed property which already i had explained in my previous video tutorial when i talk about the seed means a stands for atomic right atomic says that either all the activities of the transaction occur or none occur even if one of the activity in the group fails uh, fails that other activities are cancelled or rolled back right here we are just performing the two actions one is withdraw another is deposit if any of the actions getting failed then transaction should roll back so that of course we are managing over here now second c stands for consistent one of the transaction is complete the system is put back oh, sorry once the transaction is complete the system is put back into the state that is properly defined in our example if money is debited from one account and not credited to the another account then the system is not consistent state since the money is now lost from the system from a database point of view consistent consistent also means that all the times none of the database constants are evaluated now uh, we are managing the consistency as well right so now third property is isolation or isolated the transaction allows multiple people to work on the same data in a way that one transaction does not affect the data of the rest of the system therefore two transaction can occur simultaneously without dirty reads this is generally accomplished by locking the rows or uh, locking the database rows or database table itself so how we can set isolation level in uh, while handling the transaction we'll see in next series of video tutorial and if you are uh, very curious to know how to set i mean uh, isolation level using programmatic transaction management then i have shown you the api default transaction definition you need to use while creating the transaction template now fourth thing is the durability or d stands for durability Durable means the changes of the transaction are persisted to the permanent storage. So of course we are uh, uh, storing the, I mean, uh, uh, changes into the uh, RDB image itself. So this is our permanent storage. So once your application restarts, then latest states of the, I mean, object you can retrieve from the database itself. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video tutorial, guys. In next series of video tutorial, I'm going to cover how to manage transaction declaratively using uh, xml configuration or annotation so please be with me over there so we'll have a lot of learning there so thanks for watching my video tutorial and please subscribe my youtube channel so that you'll get intimation when i'll upload my uh, new videos on my youtube channel thank you so much